me to my topic for the day. So one of the movies we went and rewatched was Waiting to Exhale. Now this is not the first time I've watched this movie, but I think this is the first time I've seen this movie and understood the context of it. I mean, being a woman who's 28 years old, I fully had a better grasp of the movie than I did when I was <laughs> like 10 years old or six years old or however old I was when I first originally watched this movie and really had no clue what was going on. So if you have seen this movie, then you know what it is all about. If you have not seen this black classic, then let me explain. It is about four friends who are in various stages of their lives in regards to dating men and the struggles that they are separately experiencing with that. So the first friend is Bernie, Bernadette. She is going through a divorce with her husband who recently left her for a white woman. And then there is Robin, who is dating a few men and trying to find Mr. Wright, who recently got out of a relationship with a man who is married. Then there is Gloria, beautiful Gloria, who hasn't really dated anybody but her baby father, who ends up being gay which we're gonna touch base on that and everything. And then last but not least, there is Savannah, played by Whitney Houston. All of these women are played by phenomenal, well-known actress. I mean, we have Loretta Devine, we have Angela Bassett, and then we have Whitney Houston. And then of course, we also have Leela Rashawn. And um, so Savannah is played by Whitney Houston and she is single, she just moved to the city, but she also was in a relationship with a married man for a very long time who enters back into her life. So this movie, which I have now deemed the original Sex in the City, has a very strong vibe of these women integrating their friendships and their relationships and, and their selves while they go through this journey of figuring out who they are. Now why I call this the original Sex in the City is because this movie came out in 1995 and and Sex and the City came out in 1998 and it, the book itself wasn't even written until 1996. Not to say that that's exactly where she drew her inspiration, but I always think it's interesting, especially in the 90s, that a lot of black films and TV shows paved the ways for white replicas that were later of more known success. So first came Waiting to Exhale, which is just one example, and then came Sex and the City. I feel like because Waiting to Exhale was such a block buster hit that they were like oh we can definitely do this again but let's make it white and this isn't the first time they did this they also did this with living single and friends living single came out in 1993 friends came out in 1994 and if you watch both shows then you clearly know that there was definitely a basis from the black original anyway I digress. <laughs> the original Sex in the City um, really gave us strong black woman vibes. I mean, Bernie herself, played by Angela Bassett, is an entire vibe. If you've seen the movie, then you know the scene where she gathers up all of his shit and one of the most thought provoking speeches she gives with each article she grabs off, she lists another reason and, and pain and suffering she's given to this man to take it all and throw it into his a very expensive car and then set the car on fire and just sit there with a lit cigarette watching that shit burn. If that is not such a classic scene that I really don't know what else is. And everything she said was just so real and I think so poignant for the time and the experience of black women. Not to say that the issue of black men leaving black women for white women isn't still relevant. I just know for the past generation, it was a bigger issue. Like my grandmother, for instance, my grandfather loved him all the same, but he left her and she paid, like she worked to put him through school and she gave him five beautiful children and he left her, she divorced her. And eventually, not right away, eventually ended up marrying a white woman who he built a whole house for, who he left all of his money to and, and yada, yada, yada. So I think watching Bernie go through that scene was very emotional and just seeing the way that she was Miss Angela, the way that Miss Angela is able to bring a character to life and put all of the emotion to it, seeing that really, I feel like drove home everything you were gonna get from this movie, which was the emotional ties, the investment in self, the struggle, the pain, the hurt of dealing with these deadbeat ass men. Like, <laughs> It gave you all of that and some, especially when Bernie walks into the room and slaps the goddamn shit out of that white woman in front of all of those white people. It was just everything. Bernie is a vibe. Bernie is that. The way she slapped that lady, the way she burned her husband shit, the way she dealt with her emotions and her struggle and her sacrifice and knowing that she deserved more than he was willing to give her, all of that. 
all of it. Every time she called him something, all of it. It was everything. And that's just one of the four women. Every single one of them was going through their own journey. I mean, Gloria, who is played by Loretta Devine, the fabulous Loretta Devine, she is that, I feel like they were all personifying typical, stereotypical black women within our community. And she was the single mother, the one who was giving everything to her kid, the one who only kind of had eyes for her baby's father. And he turning out to be gay I feel like said a lot in a way that it was her sacrificing so much for so little and that it put a real focus on the down low situations that really took place in the 90s with that said the way the situation was handled was a lot better than I thought it was going to be handled but the way that the f word was used throughout this movie is one of the things that does ultimately make it not age as well. So Robin, she is who you would see as the single girl who's doing the most, who has all the men, who wants somebody who looks good and does good and has a good job and all of these things. And you think that she's gonna be stereotypical in the way that she sacrifices quality of interior for quality of exterior, but she meets a man, Michael, who ain't good in bed, the sex was cringy, who isn't good at producing anything for her, but she gives herself over to him wholly under the anticipation that this is gonna be something for her. And same can be said for Savannah when Allstate Kenneth brings his ass back around to try and get in her pants again. And she fully sacrifices to the possibility of being with him and him leaving his wife just to realize that that ain't gonna happen. I feel like I'm rambling, but what I am really essentially trying to get at is I think all of these women show different perspectives of what it was like to be a black woman in the 90s and what dating was like for a black woman in the 90s while also showing a certain level of strength in character and strength in self to be able to separate themselves from the situation and learn to exist by themselves. And that's the part where I really felt like exhaling came from. The title of the movie seemingly seems, <laughs> the title of the movie seems to get its name from a moment when Savannah is on a date and she says that she wants a man that's hers and when where she can just stop and exhale where she can stop holding her breath and just exist in it and I thought that was going to be the whole theme where each of these women find these men and they are able to exhale and that's the waiting to exhale title of it but I think the reality is it was more about them finding themselves and being able to exhale and that was beautiful and that theme I think is what carries it through to modern day. Now this movie was more for people like my mom who was in her mid-20s when this movie came out and very much in the dating world but I being in my mid-20s and very much in the dating world watching this now I can still relate to it and I think that's what makes it age so well. I could see myself in some of these characters in some of their struggles and some of their needing to love themselves like when Gloria said that she shouldn't be eating this food because she's already too big I was like damn girl if I ain't said some dumb shit like that before too so I think it transcends the era that it was created in to still hit black women to this day and that is beautiful <laughs> not to get corny on you all but I think it was truly a, an exceptional watch and I Love the way that it was 90s, that we didn't have to have some epic scene happen or some dramatic conclusion that we kind of just got to vibe out with these people for two hours in their life and see them transform as people, especially Bernie. See her go through this traumatic experience of having this man she gave so much to leave her to then find herself in the very end and be comfortable with being just by herself and to get her goddamn dues. So I... Definitely would say that this movie is able to be watched today with little cringe factors. I will say yes, Gloria's son Tariq saying the F word in reference to his father being gay was cringy as shit and very outdated and all of that. But with that aside, other than that, I think this movie was able to take a very talked about and overdone concept and breathe new air into it and then give it to us generation after generation after generation for us to rewatch it and I would definitely recommend 
rewatching it and rewatching it with your mom because the conversations me and my mother had about the generational differences when it came to dating was so deep. I mean, it was a very connecting moment for us. So sit down, grab some drinks, curl up with your mom and watch this movie again. I promise you it is well worth the watch and you will come out of it <sighs> exhaling, okay? You'll be breathing deep because you will have felt it. So with all of that said, I definitely would give this movie a five out of five and I would definitely recommend everybody watching it if you haven't seen it or rewatching it if it hasn't been something you've watched in some time because it is worth it. So let me tell you, it is worth it. <laughs> But that was just a little bit of movie talk with me. Be sure to leave a call or text on the CWF Network hotline 347-719-3350 with your thoughts on this movie, on your moments that you had this Mother's Day. We'd love to hear them. Be sure to follow me at DS Walls and also follow the network at CWFP underscore. But let me get out of here. I have been your host, DS Walls, and these are my views from the back row. This is the CWF Network where we bring you big content in small pieces follow us on instagram at cwfp underscore okay bye